ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce your host, Jaden. <laughs> Good morning, ESM. We have a guest today. You may know him. You probably don't. It's Chris. <laughs> hi, everybody. Hi, hi, hi. Thanks for having me, Jaden. No problem. Today's show, we wanted to address one thing. Our talk show is political. More on that after news and announcements. Popular dating app Tinder will be adding new safety features to their website, including a panic button option. The app with, with now includes location services, direct communication with emergency contacts, and even anti-catfishing AI. Users can now save information regarding date locations and partner into before meeting them. And hitting the panic button will send this m information to emergency responders. The anti-catfishing AI works by checking photos added to the profile in question and asking the owner to upload real-time selfies. The feature will roll out in the U.S. on January 28th and eventually globally. Deborah Dugan, who is the suspended chief executive of the organization behind the Grammy Awards, claims the nominating process for the music industry ceremony is rigged and clouded by conflicts of interest. Dugan, who was placed on administra administrative leave last week about 10 days before this year's ceremony, painted the Recording Academy as an institution containing widespread corruption in which powerful industry figures exercise excessive influence on who gets recognized for their music's top honors. She also described the Academy as an old boys club where misogyny runs rampant. Dugan is in a legal battle with the Recording Academy, which said it suspended her while it investigates allegations that she created a toxic work environment with an abusive and bullying management style. She denied the description of her about five months as executive. Dugan filed a discrimination complaint with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, claiming she had been placed in leave in retaliation for having sent a memo outlining her concerns about the Academy to Human Resources. She also alleges unlawful gender discrimination, sexual harassment, unlawful retaliation, and unequal pay. The Academy said Dugan's allegations about its voting procedures were utterly untrue. The Academy claims its voting process is free of conflicts of interest and is absolutely fair, and that of, for Dugan to suggest anything contradictory is simply not true. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There will be a senior class meeting on Monday in the auditorium from 1015 to 1029 to discuss the ch uh, choosing of the yearbook dedication and fundraising. ESM DECA will be holding a staff versus student basketball game in the large gymnasium at the high school on February 1st. We are looking for faculty and students to participate. In order to participate, each player will need to raise $20 and you will receive a free t-shirt on a first come first serve basis. The first 20 students and first 20 staff members will be signed up. All proceeds go to ESM Youth Sports Foundation. See Cam er, Rachel Underwood, Cameron Ure, or come down to B4 if you would like to participate and or have any questions. More in information about the event will be forthcoming. Please join us for a fun-filled day of basketball for a worthy cause. So, on talk shows, we have a graph usually. We have a graph for mm -hmm. the yeah. graphic. It's right over there. They're probably going to so, pick it up. Yeah. But it shows that uh, Jimmy Fallon is the most favored TV T talk show host. TV talk show host? Mm -hmm. Really? Which is very interesting. Yes, uh, I know. Oh. And then among all adults, actually. But then Stephen Colbert yeah, is yeah. usually in the middle, too. Mm -hmm. I see it, yeah. Mm hmm. Jimmy Kimmel's yeah. got a lot yeah. of, uh, or most of the shows usually have like a more uh, democratic point of view. Mm -hmm. So one thing that a lot of people have been talking about in media today is one thing. Are talk shows taking inspiration from news stations and debatable topics? You may think that this question shouldn't really bother us, but the reality is with today's current political system and how crazy everything is at the moment, it is kind of hard to get a real clear view of everything that is happening. And we believe that talk shows have something to do about it. Now, an article by The Morning Consult, Jimmy Fallon, I, we said, is the most favorite TV host among all adults surveyed. Yeah, I love watching Jimmy Fallon, but sometimes, like, the skits are really, like, they're political, but they, like, they usually make the same joke, like, three times in one episode, yeah. so it, yeah. it wears off after a while. I, I personally don't know what to take as a joke and what to take seriously most of the time. Like, it's, it's yeah. weird. Yeah. yeah, more on this after weather. Yeah.
with a low of 29. Saturday will have a mix of rain and snow with a high of 36 and a low of 31. Sunday will have a high of 36 as well as a low of 28. Uh, Monday will snow, well, the snow will start to simmer off with only a few spotty showers during the day. Tuesday will have some sun and clouds with occasional flurries. I'm Amber with your weather. Continuing what we were saying, the political st skits in TV media has drastically increased over the years. One great example is Alec Baldwin's fake Trump impersonation skits. Yeah, while I find these fake, er, while, while I find these skits personally funny, a lot of them have had backlash from the community and the government itself. Coming from an article made last year, Alec actually fears for his family's safety, uh, safety after making threats to Trump on one of his SNL skits. Yeah, I know they're, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll come back to the. We'll come to an end right after sports. Bowling teams lost against Oswego last night, two to one. Tyler Tylerico led the team with a 657 series. The volleyball team lost last night against Utica Proctor three sets to zero. In the Australian Open yesterday, Serena Williams lost in the third round to the 27th seed Wang King. This is the first time she has lost a hard court major in the first week since 2006. Coco Goff, a 15 year old superstar, beat the defending champion and the third seed in the world, Naomi Osaka. In upcoming games, the boys and girls bowling varsity, the bowling teams play Fulton away at 345. The girls varsity basketball team plays in Auburn at 630. The girls varsity volleyball team plays against New Hartford at 630. The boys varsity basketball team plays against Auburn at 645 at home. The theme is Jersey night, so wear your favorite jersey Go out and support the Spartans. Well, I believe we learned a very important lesson today. Yes, well, talk shows can be really entertaining, funny. Sometimes you actually have to take some serious into it when they're doing serious topics. All right, well, for the end of the show, I have a joke. So what do you call an old snowman? Well, for me, Chris, and everyone here at Spartan News, have a great day. Wait, you're not going to tell me? No, we'll wait till, the, we'll wait till next week. Gotcha.